Hello, everybody. I'm Emmy Mears for Searching for Superwomen. I have about 40% voice, so I apologize for squeaking at you in advance. Um, I'm here with Chris <laughs> McCall, who's joining us back uh, with Wine of Winchesters and with Laura Hughes. And we are going to be discussing Season 9, Episode 18, Metafiction, which I'm super excited about for lots of reasons. So, ready, go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you have like what would you say, forty percent voice? I'm like forty percent long, so <laughs> with our power combined we are. Yeah. I'm pretty healthy, so you know, that's good. Mm -hmm. Gross, probably. Hmm? But I do have wine and Kristen has wine too, so we're like properly wine and Winchester. Yeah. Tea. So, I hope hey, my internet But um yeah, this episode I was like I was just kind of gleeful throughout this episode. I was very excited because immediately, immediately when it started, I'm like, okay, storyteller callback Buffy. And I happen yeah. to know that pretty much all the writers, including Robbie Thompson, are big fans of Buffy. So I, that this had to be intentional or at the very least subconscious. But um, the it was very, whole... It felt like an homage, which I appreciated. Yeah. It was, intro, like, it was impossible not to see it if you're yeah. at all. Buffy fan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you're a Buffy fan and you saw this episode, you're just like, Andrew! Yeah. But, but boogery and not as creepy slightly, yeah. <laughs> Evil. I was joking on Twitter. I was like, they should, I like, Curtis should change his name from Curtis is Booger to Megatron, or Meta, Me, Megatron, Metatron is Booger. <laughs> Megatron. Or Megatron is Booger. I don't know. Did I, I'm now I'm wondering if I actually said Megatron. Or a Metatron. I have to check. I'm doubting myself. Oh, I did say Metatron. Good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Transformer. Yeah, we're... Okay, woo. I'm better about myself and my references. But, oh, speaking of references, I, I like, I'd made a joke. I was like... I, I, in that same tweet, I'm like, yes, and yes, I understand the reference. And then right after that, as I'm watching, they... They, like, Dean asked Cass if he, like, wait, you understood that reference? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, but he didn't really, did he? No, but, but let's start at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, the metaphor is still a little beyond him, I think. Yeah. Um, and phone of spouse is ringing. Shame on spouse. Uh, <laughs> um... Yeah, so uh, we're beginning. What's, yeah. What, what's that? Um, we had. I'm trying to even remember where we started out. I have one cookie sheet. What did you? Are you guys there? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. It got very quiet. We were just so, we were just waiting. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to remember where it started. No, so. Ah. No, you don't have. To I just watched it. Like, yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> I, it started with Metatron being Andrew, and then what? Where did we go? Oh, Cass in his ripped jacket. Yes. Cass in his ripped jacket. Yeah. Okay. And that, that was important because reasons. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really, I, I liked also right off the bat seeing Dean and Sam working together in this episode, and that they'd kind of put things aside, which is interesting because I think it's very realistic in the sense of how people get over really bad conflict sometimes, mm -hmm. is like once you've kind of hashed out to the point where you can't really say anything else, you've already said your piece, and so is the other person, you kind of are at this point where, okay, well, if you're still stuck working together, you just have to work together. And I feel like that's where they are. Mm -hmm. is, And they're, they have a common goal. <coughs> Yeah, not. I mean, at the beginning of the episode, they were talking about Abaddon and trying to, you know, look at demon omens and and these new uh, soulless attacks and stuff. And right. And and they didn't seem to be bringing any of. I mean, Sam saw him like rubbing his arm and asked him if he was okay, and he's like, Yeah, yeah, we got this important thing. So it's like they're trying to talk to each other, but they still have other stuff that needs to get hashed out first. So yeah. we forgot about the shower scene. Yeah. Oh, I mentioned it, but nobody paid attention. Oh, I didn't hear you. Oh. No, I, uh, yeah, I, 
that's probably why I blanked out because it just sort of like mesmerized me for a minute there. <laughs> I had forgotten about it too, mostly because if it had been a Sam shower scene, I would have been like, <sighs> yeah. Well, but, um, I think one thing that's interesting about seeing Sam and Dean's reactions that I think is always in the background with these current episodes that hasn't been coming up quite to the surface in the same way as the Mark of Cain, which is, let's face it, a ticking time bomb. Oh, now my phone is ringing. Um, go away. Uh, <laughs> thoughts. I had them. Oh, right. Um, they're both grieving and uh, still dealing with the grief process for Kevin, and I think that it's interesting to keep that part in mind when watching them try to deal with each other because, I mean, Kevin was basically like a brother as well, and to see how, as family, they are dealing with it, I think, is an interesting thing to see, and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that brings up a good point, because, I mean, they're definitely still grieving and, right. and going through so many other things at the same time that it makes it... Um, I really, I love, I, I actually really just have loved the realism of their interactions and dealing yeah. with both trauma and, and conflict, and I, I appreciate that a lot. And also, can I just say that Robbie Thompson writes my favorite episodes. I love him <laughs> so much. And... I am just gutted that I didn't meet him at, at Burkhan last year, and he better be there this year. I promised him candy bars and cookies if he shows up. <laughs> Hear that? Open invitation, candy bars and cookies. Rob <laughs> Tom. So, um, yeah, I just, I've always, I always like his writing for that because I feel like he, he hits on, on the humanity of this show in, in ways that I really respect and appreciate. So whenever I see an episode that he's that he's written, it tends to be those ones where I'm just like, you know what, this is real, I get this. Like, this is where I connect to the show is seeing seeing Dean and Sam together and, and seeing Cass. Like, I yeah. cast this episode. I just love him so much. And on the phone, him asking Dean, like, how are you? He's like, I miss my wings. You know, like, that's, yeah. it's just... I have really loved Cass's development this season, and I liked him in this episode a lot as well. Yeah, he always seems most Cass-like, you know, like, in character and not being weird. I mean, it, whatever. I'm sorry, I'm not... very highly competent in this episode, and I think that they really did a good job of featuring that, because we've had Goofy Cass a couple of times, which is a little bit of a letdown, and in this one, he was really on the ball and I, noticing, you know, my coat was torn and, and, and leading and trying to to keep Dean and Sam going in some ways. Yeah, and, and really attentive, too, yeah. also to, you know, to, like, that last scene where he just pulls up Dean's sleeve and is like, Yeah. Like, what have you done? What are you doing? Yeah. That was a really cool scene. And, um... And I just, I really, like, I loved Cass in this episode. Just, yeah, his competence was just really an awesome thing to see. Also, yeah. again, just back him him knowing and struggling with things. I also love that he cannot lie. He is a crappy liar. Yeah. Like, when, like, Metatron has him tied up and he's just like, you know there's problems with this stolen grace thing, right? And he's like, no, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> like, here. Fine. I said it. I said it's fine, right? It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Just like the mark of Cain is fine on Dean. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Like totally. Yeah. Fine. Mm -hmm. So I, I really I, liked that a lot, and I loved Misha's acting in this episode. And oh, really briefly, my my friend Angie's husband Brandon is in this episode, which is really oh, exciting. Really? I've been waiting for, this for a while. He's um one of Cass's minions at the end. Um, he, I, if, if I can find a picture, I think, I think Angie made him, like, pose in front of the screen, but he's totally in it, which is awesome, and, um, I guess he had a great time on set, which is really cool, so I'm so jealous, <laughs> like, super jealous, anyway, um, yay for branding one of Cass's minions. Yes. Yeah, another one of Cass's <laughs> moments that I totally loved was... The moment he realized that Gabriel was not Gabriel. Oh, and we should probably mention Gabriel in the first place then if we're going to talk about this. Yeah, let's mention. Yes. I was so glad to see him back. And I oh, knew, me. I mean, we knew from the beginning with that intro from 
Metatron that everything in this episode was going to be in under doubt and right. Yeah, so what's real? What's I was like, yay! But it's probably not true. But is it true? You yeah. know. Yeah, and I liked how they left it open ended, like Cass asking. I love that too because I would love to see him some more. I I think they know that, and oh my god, do I love Rich Spate! I love him so much, and I like Laura. Have you ever? Have you? Is this your first Supernatural con that you're going to? Yes. Cool. Okay, so so he's just awesome and wonderful, and he has the like master ceremonies for the whole weekend, right? And he is just so personable and friendly. And when I saw him, like, walking around at Burkhan, he would say hi and stuff like that. Like, he's just a genuine, really cool dude. And I'm so excited to see him back on this show because, I like, I've been pining away for him secretly since he was gone. So, yeah, I, I have missed him a lot, so it was quite the delight to see him back. Yeah, but even from the beginning, there was just something, like, when he first came on screen, it was like there was just something slightly not right about his... Yes. Lines and delivery, and he, you know, there was just something slightly un-Gabriel about it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that was intentional, completely. I think so, too. Now, in retrospect, we were, when he was talking about his, his grand plan to lead the angels, my husband was like, nope, no, no, I don't buy it. He's not, that's not what he does. And I was like, yeah, you're right. And then as mm-hmm. it was going on, I was like, why is he being weird? He's usually really good, and he's being weird. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was very, he was missing the tongue-in-cheek. That's what he was missing. Yeah. The trickster trickster Gabriel that we knew went through life very just like spiky and... Sparkle and and fake Gabriel didn't. Yeah. He was a little more Metatron-ish because he was a character that Metatron was writing, you know. Exactly. And the moment that Cass realized that, though, that was just one of my favorite cast moments of the whole episode. That was beautiful. Yeah. And just like casual stab with the angel Yeah, thing. Yeah, and fake Gabriel is just like, hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> he just took it. I love that. He's just yeah. like, hey, stab did. <laughs> yeah, that was all very, very good. And I hope we see Rich Spate more because I just. Uh, yeah. Yep. He, just needs the to there. he belongs there. Yeah. It's true. So. Yeah, there was a lot I really liked about this episode, and let's talk about Tomo for or Tom Tomo Penkett for a minute. Because he yes, was back. And I, him. I I feel like he's been kind of wooden in this role in the angel like way that the angels have. Yeah, and he kept saying Bean, and I was like, you're Canadian, but like, um, like you're being very Canadian right now. Yeah, <laughs> you, you you took your extra Canadian <laughs> or something today. Uh, but I was super glad to see him back, and um, I thought that the ending where uh, oh god now I'm a, now I'm scared I'm going to say Megatron. <laughs> uh, anyway, where uh, he was Booker. asking you know was it part of your plan for me to get taken, and Megatron is like no, totally not. <laughs> it was a surprise and in that moment of. Uh, Gadriel looking at him and being like, "Okay, so I think I, I, there's some possible friction there, and I would really love to see that." Yes. Yeah, that would be a great thing to see play out. And I guess they're filming the finale this week. Uh, I saw a tweet of Jared's that said that uh, the director that directed this episode actually was in Vancouver again to film the finale. So, okay, so that's good because I definitely really liked the directing of this this episode. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, there was a lot of, of great stuff happening in terms of camera angles and where I like just where the attention was drawn is exactly where it was supposed to be, mm-hmm. and I love that. I love the Casa yeah. Erotica thing too. Yeah. Oh yeah, me up. I was just like, and there he is with the porno stash. You know, <laughs> I, knew, I knew he was gonna be coming up because I'd seen something online that showed that said he was in Vancouver. So I was like, oh, well, clearly he's gonna yeah. be. But um, it was that was a perfect entrance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was no better one for him. But speaking of Tomo and direction, I really love the scene where Sam got back to wherever it was that they were holding Gadriel. Uh-huh. And the camera was focused. It was like unconscious Tomo, Dean, Sam. And they're having this what could have been 
a more passionate moment. I mean, that's probably not the right word, but um, a more touching brotherly moment. And there's this unconscious angel right there, just sprawled out <laughs> like the elephant Ooh. in the room. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, yeah, an angel-sized elephant. Yeah, exactly. I have two things about that scene. One is, first of all, Dean beat an angel unconscious with his bare hands. I mean, either that says something about how weak the angels are right now, or that something supernatural is going on with Dean. Yes. And how did they get to that spot? I have been wondering up? that. That is driving me nuts. Like, what happened between when we saw Dean all angry and striding off and... Yeah. yeah, I like that too a lot. I just, I really, I Jensen in this episode was his his craft man was on point. Like watching him yeah. react to Gadriel, but also being in that place where he could recognize what was happening. Like mm -hmm. he was he was reactionary, but at the same time cognizant of the fact that that he was being played a little bit. Like yeah. he, he he clued into Gadriel's mo really quickly. Yeah. And I thought Tomo did a really great job in that scene as well because he was being brutal. And then Dean stops, and you can just see this naked fear. In yeah, that he's Dean. right. Gadriel yeah. does not want to be chained up and left, and I thought that was just really fantastic. But, of course, I'm a little biased because I didn't have to. Oh, well, yeah. He's Gadriel gonna... had been locked up since, you know, yeah. Garden of Eden, so yeah. let's say he's probably really averse to going back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I really loved, loved the fact that um, that we saw that, I mean, that Dean was able to kind of pull out mm -hmm. Gadriel's real backstory in that moment. Like, he didn't have to hear it. He didn't have to anything. He could just see it. Yeah. And really liked the, the intuition that Dean showed in this episode. And mm -hmm. also in that first scene where Cass... <coughs> or where Cass calls Dean, and you see the interaction between Sam and Dean in the bunker. And, mm -hmm. like, they played off each other so beautifully in that moment of just there was so much that was not written but happened in that moment between the brothers of just the interplay of their relationship right now is just so fascinating to watch for me. Mm -hmm. Because that's all the communication they seem to allow themselves right now. Yeah. It's kind of the muscle memory, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And it's so fraught because, I mean, Dean has the mark of Cain. Cain. Like, and yeah, he's, he's, you know, working in close quarters with his brother and there's friction there. That, Like I said, that is just a time bomb. And it's what everything that they're not saying is just building up and adding fuel to the eventual explosion. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I've, this this episode did a lot for me. I was really gleeful watching it and just delighted by almost everything that I saw. Like I appreciated so much of this episode, and my voice is just going really badly. <laughs> Someone get <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like there was more I wanted to say. I don't remember what. Was. Do we have, is it 22 or 23 episodes this season? 23. 23. So we have 19, 20, 21, 23. So we have five episodes left. Yep. One of which is the backdoor pilot for Tribes. 21, right? I think so. So, um, yeah, I'm curious to see kind of what they do with that. Um, but, yeah, five episodes left. So things are going to be definitely picking up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because right. really, four when you think about it, because that backdoor pilot's probably not going to be a plot related. Yeah, it'll be kind of one offy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Hey, Buffy. Oh, it's Buffy. It's mm -hmm. Buffy. Buffy says howdy, and I'm gonna see if we have any questions coming out our way. Nope, nothing. Someone favored or something. <laughs> yeah. Um. Trying to think if there's anything else. My brain is still a little bit fried, and this is, I mean, yeah. we're only at 8:20 right now. <laughs> Usually, there's more to say. Also, well, this is our first week back. But. Yeah. Well, at first, I was really upset that Metatron had the audacity to download all that human information into Cass, 
And it made me so angry. I was like, man, you just ruined him. What, you know, he's not going to process all that. You know, it's like, and then, and then he gets the reference about Star Wars, but he doesn't really get the reference. You know, he yeah. gets the yeah. Yeah. metaphor and context. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, well, th he just doesn't process the same way humans do. You know, it's just, so it's, in, in some ways, it's even more endearing now. So there you go. Yeah. I really yeah. liked that. I liked that a lot, actually. And that was pretty masterful, because if you're going to do a massive, like, hand wave, hand wave info dump like that, mm -hmm. like, yeah. at least basically make it pointless. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, fine, but unless Metatron's the emperor, then I don't care. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, and I, of course, that's the point, Cass. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um... I do feel like Metatron is not a very satisfying big bad for me. Like, I just don't like him very well, and I like to be able to enjoy my villains. And yeah. I just end up kind of feel like he's trying too hard. You know, he's trying to be funny and whimsical, and it just doesn't work for me. Yeah, yeah. I can kind of feel that too. I think that that's that's why like I'm still rooting for Crowley to honestly be the big bad of like season ten because. I think that because he is is so sympathetic to us and people love him so much, that he would make almost a perfect villain because he's he's just yeah. so yeah fully fleshed. You can walk. Yeah, off we don't have any kind of handle on Metatron. I I guess maybe we're supposed to like him for being funny, but I I think we're just supposed to to hate him. I frankly I yeah, think. that's probably true. Completely, yeah, I don't know. I just I feel like I need more from yeah. my villains. I would definitely like some more from Metatron to actually. I would like. I would like there to be a level of sympathy with him and figure out I like. I don't what even need a level of sympathy. Just I just flat out don't like him, and like it just irritates me to watch him. I don't know. It might be a Kristen thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, f I mean, with me, when I said like sympathy, I think I mean more like a connection point because I don't have. Yeah, really I think that's yeah, point that's a him. good way to put it. And and I like when I. I just, I guess I don't really even understand his motivations that much. Yeah, I kind of feel that way too. Like, what does he want? Hey, like, evil! Why do we want it? Reasons! Like, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> he just wants to be in charge of everything after basically being the secretary who recorded everything the first time around. He wants to, he thinks his ideas are better and are going to work better than God's, but he's basically just a glorified typist, you know? It's, yeah. You know, that's and all he's ever been, and he... he thought his role was so important because he was so close to God the first time around, and it's like, well, now he's lost that. He's lost everything. He was chased out of heaven, and, you know, the other angels hate him for that perceived relationship with God that went away, and so he's yeah. left with nothing now, so. Yeah, and I would, like, I mean, that's, I think, why I want to see more from him is because, like, all I see is kind of the whiny kid who didn't get what he wanted. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. that's what he's left with, and it's unattractive. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it really is. Yeah. And there's there's ways to make that compelling, and I think they could. So yeah. I mean, I think that maybe we'll get there because we did have more of him this episode than maybe we've had in the past. And now he's did got we, God did you guys feel at all that you got any explanation of how he suddenly got this storytelling prophet power, godlike mightiness? I think Something to do with the fact that he killed, that once Kevin was dead, he sh shut down the mechanism in heaven that created prophets. Mm. I think he assigned it to himself, and it okay. uh, with the angel tablet. Now that he has the angel tablet, yeah, yeah. they did say the angel tablet. So yeah, and mm. he's got all these scary powers. He angel warding. He can just blow it away. You know, holy oil doesn't touch him. So he's obviously done something to make himself either seem more powerful or he's using that profit power of being able to write the story. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. To his advantage. Which I think will backfire if that's what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. I, agree. I agree. He's going to write himself into a corner and... <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I think that also the difference is that with Chuck writing, it was... He was hearing it and writing it down, and with I'm Metatron not. writing it, he's... Playing it. Being playing. God, yeah. Yeah. He's like poking. That's my puppet's dance. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it's working. 
exactly how he intends it to, even yeah. though it sort of seems like it is right now. I don't think anything is what it seems right now. Yeah, yeah. I also think that, that that is that is his weak spot right there, is his arrogance and thinking that he has it all under control because yeah. he's an author. And I did like that line where he's like, the universe is made of stories, which is, I guess, a quote from someone else, but... Um, but I did, I like, I like, I always like that idea, obviously. Um, yeah. I'm a fan of multiverse theory and all of that stuff. And I've, there's been some really interesting theories about how, like, inspiration happens because you're connecting with another universe and all of that sort of stuff, which is yeah. kind of fun to entertain, for sure. So yeah. that was a cool line for its implications. Um, and also, I like... I love when something like that touches into a, the mythology of a show I really love as well. It's just the interconnectedness yeah. of it um, makes it almost, you know, it's, I think it strengthens my suspension of disbelief, if that makes sense. Yes. Because it, it allows for possibility of other, other narratives, which is really cool. Yeah, because, I mean, free will is a thing that they fought, they fought down the apocalypse for, and God couldn't, either, you know, they, the angels had apparently been following God's script, and even that wasn't enough to, you know, yeah. ride God free will in the end. Either. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mentioned earlier about Cass being really highly capable in this episode. What did you guys think about the ending where he's doing and being capable and and Metatron is overwriting it. How did that influence the rest of the episode for you? I ask because I haven't decided yet. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I need to watch it again for that reason. Because yeah. yeah. I feel like I was a little bit distracted because that was the scene that my friend was, my friend's husband was in. So I was like, yeah. I'm like a friend. And, and, <laughs> and I just got a little distracted. Yeah. But um, So that's where I am right now with this bug is just sort of shiny. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I sort of saw it as, you know, that's basically what Metatron told him was going to happen, that he was going to take over and be the leader of... Yeah, of, I guess what I'm saying Cass, is, did it undermine Cass's capability that he, he was then doing... To do it anyway, though. Yeah. So, for right now, I see it as Cass is choosing to do this, knowing what Metatron's plan is, mm -hmm. but... Maybe he's going to share that plan with the rest of his little ducklings, or yeah. maybe he's going to use them differently than Metatron said he would, or yeah. or he's doing it because he knows Metatron is watching what they're doing now, because he oh, yeah. said to Sam and Dean. That's part of what I wondered about, is does, he, yeah. does new capable cast have some sort of grand plan? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And I thought about that, too, actually, while... Because Cass, in this episode, was definitely incredibly capable and very, very aware. And mm -hmm. I think that that awareness, especially having been tied up by Metatron and... Yeah. Yeah. Culture I think that his reluctance, as well, was really telling... He didn't want to... He doesn't trust himself, and I thought they did a really good job of showing his reluctance to take any kind of power. Yeah. Even ripping down, like, angry about having to do yeah. it and, like, ripping down the posters that he had on the wall to write the sigil up. It's just, mm -hmm. like, I can't believe I'm doing this year, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I love the Hunter wall. I loved it. I loved seeing that in Cass's room. And mm -hmm. I also, I was reading, like, the live tweets. I was kind of actually scrolling through them trying to time it as I read through um, from from what they were, the like, cast members and, and production people were tweeting last night. But um, I really, uh, I guess Andrew Dabb pitched that of having Cass have a hunter wall, which I thought was oh, yeah. a really cool thing because it shows also that he is has sort of evolved into, mm -hmm. evolved according to the Winchesters. That they have yeah, he has learned a lot from them, and it was nice to see that in action. Yeah, their influence upon him and seeing how he has changed. It was just sort of a reinforcement of the development of his character, and I really liked that. Yeah. And that was a great idea, Andrew Dabb. Great idea. Well so, done. Well done. Mm. Um, but I, I really, really enjoyed a lot of this episode. And there was just... It was kind of a relief to watch one and just feel I got sucked into it. So it was great to, to yeah. have yeah. that. 
<sighs> I was glad Tama was back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was stuck on Tama. Yeah. I guess he's hoping to work on this year, which is exciting. Yay. Tama in person. Uh-huh. As if Sebastian Roche is there again, because he's hilarious. <laughs> Balthazar. And we have a kitty toy. Oh. I am pretty out of it. Yeah, me too. Honestly, I've had like a third of a glass of wine, or maybe two thirds. That's <laughs> the longest I've sat upright in four days, so. <laughs> uh. Well, if you'd like, we can always cut this episode a little bit short. We don't have to go the full hour since we're all kind of dead. Yeah. But um, I also did want to say next week we will not have wine in Winchester's. Um, I have something I have to do, so. Okay. But. Uh, or if you guys like, you're welcome to have it without me. I can teach you how to run through ropes. But um, we can talk about that later. Uh, did any? Did either of you have anything else you wanted to say about this episode or future episodes? What you hope to see the rest of the season? Or next week we get Jody Mills. Yes! yes. Oh yay! Yes. I'm so excited about that. I love Kim Rhodes. Love her. Yep. So, I'm yeah. Me. I saw her tweet about it and I love her hashtag. Am I dead? No. <laughs> 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 Like, don't be dead. Please don't be dead. Now I have to watch it because I have to make sure she's not dead. She yeah. can't be. If they kill her, I would be so pissed. I would be really pissed. I, that's what I told my husband this morning when we he was we were watching uh, last the previews after last night's episode. It was like, I was like, yeah, that's like one of the things you can do to like cause fan hate the fastest is kill Jody. Yeah. She's literally the only female character on the show besides Mama Tran. Yeah. Like, they kill, awesome. they kill 50% of the female characters on the show in one episode, yeah. but I'm very mad. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, come on, guys, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just glad Hannah, the angel, survived the episode. Yeah. The one, the yeah. For Cass, I'm just, wow, yeah. a female survived an episode. <laughs> Talk about that. A woman survived an episode of Supernatural. Oh my god. So Jody's dead, isn't she? <laughs> oh crap. Yeah, she probably is. Hey, I got the one free pass. Hmm. Okay, Supernatural writers, if you ever watch this, take heed <laughs> <laughs> what we expect from you. Come on, change it up a little. Uh, yeah, I really hope that I hope that Jody survives the next episode. I will be yeah. She's Correct. pretty killed, totally it's not. She's already killed a goddess, so, you know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She's pretty badass. She's got her... She's yeah. Got, and she's come up against Crowley and um, Leviathan, and yep. her smarts has gotten her out of most of those things. Like... She got herself out of the hospital. Was like, nope, peace. My roommate's gone. Probably dead. Saw big teeth. Gonna leave. Just like, <laughs> yeah. She's gotta get head on her shoulders. I like Jody Mills. <laughs> yeah. I would do the same yeah. to her. Such an insult. I, I. Yeah. No, she's smarter than that. She's gonna Better. get out of it. Yep. I will. Not. I never see the previews, so I just go into every episode blind. Yeah, I don't usually see them either because our DVR doesn't record it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So, well, I guess well, the rest of the season, I guess, what do I expect? What do I want to see? We already kind of talked about Dark Dean, how we want to see Dark Dean. Um, and I think we're getting there. I think we are, too. So I feel like this season and the last season a little bit, I didn't really know where we were headed in some yeah. ways. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, I mean, it's in part because last season and the season before, it was a big change for me to be watching it episode by episode instead of the season before that. I, I've lost track of how many seasons I said. Anyway, we had just marathon watched it on Netflix, so you get a very clear idea of where you're headed. But when you're watching episode by episode, it's a little harder. Yeah, it's kind of harder to connect the dots. Yeah. But yeah. I'm... I'm excited to do a full rewatch in the future. Probably I'm going to do one maybe this summer. Possibly. Yeah. If we do that, we could pick up the Supernatural roundtables, because I think we finished season two, so we could start at season three and pick up the yeah. roundtables and do that again. 
It's the kind of thing that I keep meaning to start, and then I just watch Friends. So apparently I'm in a Friends <laughs> rut right now, and we'll get on to better TV soon. <laughs> I've been watching anything lately except for except for Supernatural and Face Off. So I finished some revisions last week, so I've been like TV turn brain off, no thinking. <laughs> oh, Game of Friends is back, so I've been watching. Yes. Oh, and I'm not going to spoil it, but oh, the last episode was... Oh, it was wonderful. Purple. <laughs> purple is my favorite color all of a sudden, so, um, yeah. And on that note, uh, <laughs> I guess we'll bid you farewell, gentle viewers, and we shall see you in two weeks, I think. <coughs> so have a wonderful time. Don't get sick like we have done, and we love you lots. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye.